is News 3 Now at 6. Wisconsin Attorney General Josh Call is going to be holding a press conference any minute, providing an update to the Kenosha police shooting of Jacob Blake. We will go to that live as soon as it begins. Meanwhile, Illinois police have arrested a 17-year-old after two people were shot and killed and a third person injured during Black Lives Matter protests last night in Kenosha. Kyle Rittenhouse of Antioch, Illinois, that's about 15 miles from Kenosha, was arrested today on suspicion of first-degree intentional homicide. He allegedly is the shooter captured on cell phone video firing a semi-automatic rifle at protesters after being chased down a Kenosha street. Two people are dead. This is not a police action. This is not the action, I believe, of those who set out to do protests. It is, involved, it is the persons who were involved after the legal time involved in illegal activity that brought violence to this community. A 26-year-old person from Kenosha County's village of Silver Lake and a 36-year-old from the city of Kenosha were killed. A third person from West Allis was also shot but is expected to survive. Rittenhouse is being held without bond and faces an extradition hearing on Friday. The local nonprofit Freedom Inc. posted a statement in response to the killing of two protesters, calling the shooter a white supremacist. Their statement says, quote, white vigilantes face little to no consequences for the violence and death they bring into our community, and this is by design. It goes on to say police allowed the militias to terrorize protesters last night and allowed the man responsible to leave the scene. We have team coverage tonight. Jamie Perez spoke with a Madison group that rallies people together to educate and spread a message that change is needed. Well, first, we go to Adam Duxer live outside the Dane County Jail. Adam, what happened there? Yeah, Eric and Charlotte, just a couple of hours ago, local activist Jordan King was released here from the Dane County Jail on a $500 signature bond. Now, King was arrested late Monday night into Tuesday morning on charges. He allegedly damaged state-owned land, among other things. But as a part of his release, he cannot be on State Street or the Langdon area and also cannot be on the Capitol Square or possess a weapon. But tonight, protests will start again at 8 p.m. Impact Demand is leading a protest at Library Mall. We'll have live coverage both on our Facebook page and tonight on News 3 Now at 10 during this fourth day of demonstrations. Adam Ducks are live downtown. Adam, thank you. New at 6, listen, don't just hear. That's what people rallying outside the Capitol for months are begging you to do. Jamie Perez took the time today to listen. She's live at the top of State Street to tell us how that group wants to encourage change through hopeful messages. Jamie? Right, well, yesterday, if you remember, I did a story sharing how these business owners around Capitol Square felt about the demonstrations that have been going on downtown. And if you remember, not everybody feels the same. Well, the same thing can be said about the people that I spoke with today, and they have a message of unity to share if you just give them some time to listen. They know what they've done to us. Every day at the top of State Street. The crowds grow, the crowds are always different. For months now. All across this country. They know what they've done to us. You can find a new crowd of people. Say that Black Lives Matter. Coming together for a common cause. It seems like, you know, Madison is really hungry for something like this. One of the event organizers agreed to speak with us, but wanted to stay anonymous for her safety. So we're out here speaking again. Imperialism, capitalism, patriarchy, and we know that no one is free until black people are free. The message, one they describe as unifying, empowering, supportive of a good cause. There's so much love here. This is a group of people coming together because they deeply care for a community in our country who is being disproportionately affected by police brutality and a system that wasn't made for them. They've been rallying people together as a unified support system ever since the George Floyd protests started in late May. I think if we don't come out here and raise our voices, then people are just going to keep ignoring that message. They know that many people don't want them here, which is exactly why these people say their message now needs to be heard every day. You're just hearing the noise. You're not listening to what we have. Have to say it's about you need to listen you need to come out and see what we're actually doing out here because it's more than just noise where it's a message that we that needs to be spread and even though not everyone agrees on the issues we face as a community i don't think anybody wants to see our community harmed but what i do know is that the harm the harm you know the breaking of the property none of that has been on the scale the same scale as the harm that has come to um, communities of color in madison the the message is revolution. We want to shed light on and we, what we want to wake people up to is that this entire system is violent against black and brown people.
Now, obviously, not everybody that attends these has the same views on all of this, but a lot of people just come out here to listen, to have an open mind about how we as a community can work together to move forward. Jamie, thank you. School District's new superintendent, Dr. Carlton Jenkins, shared a statement that the district stands with the city and country in the wake of the shooting of Jacob Blake and other acts of violence against black Americans. He says they resemble, quote, modern day lynchings. Dr. Jenkins calls on the community to advocate for human decency. Three NBA playoff games set for today are postponed after the Bucks decided to boycott game five against the Orlando Magic. Players have been discussing boycotting games in the bubble down in Orlando after the police shooting of Blake. The Bucks decided they would act. Magic players and referees were on the the floor for the game, but Milwaukee's players never came out. About two hours later, the Brewers also postponed their game at Miller Park tonight against the Cincinnati Reds and sports director Zach Hanley will have player reaction a little bit later in sports. President Trump says he is sending federal officers to Kenosha. In a tweet, he writes that Governor Evers has accepted the assistance. Earlier today, White House Chief of Staff Mark Meadows told Fox News the governor declined the extra help. Governor Evers has increased the number of Wisconsin National Guard members authorized to assist in Kenosha. Earlier this week, 125 members were sent to protect infrastructure and maintain public safety. Then that number increased to 250 on Tuesday and now 500. Every minute spent wiping graffiti off walls or boarding up windows as Time Madison businesses are not making money. That's especially challenging for the 150 State Street stores that have ridden through a pandemic and now two rounds of protests. Talil Muhadeen talked with business owners downtown to see what, if any, financial help is available for those businesses. She joins us now live. Just over a week ago, four out of every five downtown businesses were back open. Many had begun to take down the boards covering windows and owners were looking forward to the increase in traffic with students back on campus. But now they're back to cleaning up broken glass and asking for community support. $200,000 can go a long way, but when it gets split among 69 downtown businesses, it disappears quickly. There's a remaining 90-some businesses that didn't receive any level of support. That money went towards repairs and recovery after damaging protests in May and June. But with more protests every night this week, the Madison Common Council hasn't approved any of the proposed recovery funding plans. We've been following that, and that's political, and not moving forward at any quick pace. So as individual businesses, as community citizens, and as residents that care about downtown Madison, we put together the Downtown Madison Fund. The fund was meant to pick up where the Boys and Girls Community Relief efforts left off. We had hoped our first fundraising effort out of that campaign would be for about 300000 and that goal would be to have helped these businesses put them physically back together. Now, that number may not be enough. The group's executive director isn't sure how much damage has been caused or how much more could come. We don't have a full assessment of what the need might be now. And for business owners trying to get by, they're well over budget, while others are still waiting for insurance claims to come through. You know, it's not only about the money, but we have to be, you know, we have to survive. Downtown Madison representatives echoed the beliefs of community leaders who called the property damage a distraction. They say they'd rather be having conversations about the relationships that they built and the equity projects they've begun in the community instead of broken glass. Conversations they say they can't have if they're not operating on a basic level. All right, Talil live on State Street tonight. Talil, thank you. And we have breaking news tonight. Officials with the Wisconsin Department of Justice have released the identity of the officer who fired his gun at Jacob Blake seven times into his back. They have identified him as Officer Rustin Shesky and say no other officers fired their guns. Shesky has been with the department for seven years. During the investigation, DOJ officials say Blake admitted to having a knife and law enforcement recovered one from the driver's side floorboard of his vehicle. We will have continuing coverage as we learn more about the investigation. Stay with News 3 Now and Channel3000.com. Now we turn now to our forecast with some rain and possible storm chances on the way. Let's go to Chief Meteorologist Gary Canalti. Gary? But that's not until we have another hot and humid day tomorrow. Then the thunderstorms will break the heat. As we take a look at visible cloud track, lots of sunshine across the state of Wisconsin. That's allowed our, our temperatures to really warm up. There are some thunderstorms in the northern part of the state, but they'll stay to our north for tonight and much of the day tomorrow before they sag southward and eventually break our heat. Temperatures right now range from the middle to the upper 80s. A few places are still in the 90s. Lacrosse still at 95. 
95 in Basquiatl and 93. Dew point temperatures are in the middle 60s to around 70 degrees, so it's very humid out there. Heat index readings are, are at or above 90 for much of southern Wisconsin. Heat advisories in effect until 7 p.m. for areas west of a Platteville to Lone Rock to Camp Douglas line. There is an alert day in the forecast for tomorrow for high heat and humidity and the potential for some strong to severe thunderstorms late tomorrow afternoon and tomorrow night. But before then, look for clear and mild conditions tonight with a low of 72. Tomorrow's high again at 90 degrees, but after the thunderstorms, we'll look for a nice weekend. I'll have more details and weather in a few minutes. Coming up next at 6, UW-Madison's two unions will soon be closed to the public as part of the university's plan to help decrease the spread of COVID-19. We'll tell you when that goes into effect when we come back. Wild East Town Honda has clearance savings on over 400 new Hondas. Get 0% financing for up to 60 months on your favorite new Hondas at Wild East Town Honda in Madison. It's gotta be wild. This is the big one, folks. The Brothers Main Everything's on Sale sale. Right now, you'll get everything from Whirlpool, Maytag, KitchenAid, and Amana with blowout savings, like a Maytag washer for $3.99 and a Maytag dryer for just $3.99. And you'll always get more from the Moore store, like our risk-free 30-day price satisfaction guarantee. The Everything's on Sale sale, with more selection, more savings, and more satisfaction on everything. Now at the Brothers Main, your local store for more since 1938. Get free Sprecher beer or soda for the entire football season right now during Steinhoffel's Made in the USA sale. Save 35 to 75% store-wide, plus get an extra $50 off and Wisconsin-made Sprecher beer or soda. Steinhoffel's has the largest selection of quality American-made furniture and mattresses, and it's all on sale. Plus, get special financing for 60 months and free in-cart and shipping. Save big and enjoy a Sprecher on us when you shop Steinhoffel's Made in the USA sale. I like to drive. I used to think I was a pretty good driver. But now Joe Biden's taken a sharp left turn. Buckle up for his $4 trillion tax hike. Biden's plan raises taxes on small business, reversing the recovery. He's pledged to eliminate blue collar oil and gas jobs. And analysts estimate stocks would crash up to 25% if Biden takes the wheel, crushing your retirement. This is just bold. Hit the brakes on Biden. He'll wreck our economy. Club for Growth Action is responsible for the content of this advertising. Wild East Town Honda has cleared savings on 400 new Hondas. Lease a new all-wheel drive CRV for $269. That's $269 and absolutely zero due at signing at Wild East Town Honda in Madison. It's gotta be wild. Let's go live to Kenosha now where Attorney General Josh Call is providing an update on the shooting of Jacob Blake. No other officer fired their weapon. The Kenosha Police Department uh, does not have body cameras and therefore the officers uh, were not wearing body cameras. Uh, the shooting officer, Kenosha Police Officer Rustin Chesky, has been a law enforcement officer with the Kenosha Police Department uh, for seven years. During the investigation following the initial incident, uh, Mr. Blake admitted that he had a knife in his possession, uh, and DCI agents, that's the Division of Criminal Investigation, uh, recovered a knife from the driver's side floorboard of Mr. Blake's vehicle. Uh, a search of the vehicle located no additional weapons. Uh, law enforcement immediately provided medical aid to Mr. Blake, uh, and Flight for Life transported him to Fredert Hospital in Milwaukee. Uh, Mr. Blake remains at the hospital. Uh, the Division of Criminal Investigation at the Wisconsin Department of Justice is leading this investigation, and it's being assisted by the Federal Bureau of Investigation, the Wisconsin State Patrol, and the Kenosha County Sheriff's Office. Uh, all involved law enforcement officers are fully cooperating with DCI during the investigation, uh, and the involved officers have been placed on administrative leave. Um, as I said, uh, this is an ongoing investigation, uh, so that is the extent of the information regarding the facts of this case uh, that we can share at this point. Uh, there have been uh, interviews conducted of material witnesses, uh, but the investigation uh, remains ongoing. Uh, under Wisconsin law, uh, in cases in which a person dies, in a case in which an officer fired their weapon, uh, the law requires that an independent investigative agency be brought in to conduct the investigation. But in many other cases, uh, the Wisconsin Department of Justice is brought in to conduct an independent investigation as well, and that is what is happening in this case. Our agency 
is the independent investigating agency. Our That's Wisconsin job. Attorney General Josh Call. Just to recap, officials with the Department of Justice have released the identity of the officer who fired his gun at Jacob Blake seven times into his back, identified as R Officer Rustin Shesky, a seven-year veteran. They say no other officers fired their weapons. Shesky, again with the department, seven years. During that investigation, DOJ officials say Blake admitted to having a knife. Law enforcement recovered one from the driver's side floorboard of his vehicle. And this story will continue to cover at channel3000.com and on News 3 Now's later newscast. We'll be right back. Furniture and Appliance Mart's Labor Day Appliance Sale starts now. Get Wisconsin's best appliance deals, plus 18 months no interest, and free doorstep delivery within five days on all in-stock appliances at Furniture and Appliance Mart inside Ashley Home Store off the Beltline. Let's summer. Let's dine out by truly dining out. Let's serve up the freshest of food with a side of fresh air. And save a little money without sacrificing the savory. Let's raise our tongs to tasty by introducing our grills to new thrills and make mouths water more than a backyard slip and slide. Let's live a little more by having another s'more. Because summer is here and no one does summer savings like Festival Foods. out not canceled catching up not canceled game night not canceled nap time not canceled if new carpet would make you happier at home we're here to help with standard carpet installation of just $75 carpet one room or your whole house and installation is only $75 while we celebrate our 75th anniversary coil carpet one floor and home locally owned and operated since 1945 Scranton is a long way from Wall Street. You won't find skyscrapers or big city bankers, just hardworking people. That's where Joe Biden's story starts. It's why he's running for president, for the backbone of this nation, working families. Donald Trump, he's in it for himself and his wealthy friends. In this crisis, we need to help workers and small businesses, and we need a president who will build back better. I'm Joe Biden, and I approve this message. Wells Asphalt Paving, expert paving for over 40 years. Now offering $250 off your asphalt paving project for residential and commercial, from new construction to replacements. Call today and save at Wells Asphalt Paving. Ashley Home Store's Labor Day Tempur-Pedic deals start now. Pay $28 per month interest-free for six years on Tempur-Pedic, plus $300 in free furniture and free guaranteed delivery within five days on in-stock beds. Only at Ashley Home Store. This is home. We're expecting Wisconsin to be a focus in the third night of the Republican National Convention. The headliner, Vice President Mike Pence, will likely talk about what's happening in Kenosha. Madeline O'Neill tells us what else to expect tonight. Tonight's theme is Land of Heroes, and Trump campaign officials say there will be a heavy focus on the military and law enforcement. Pence will formally accept the Republican Party's vice presidential nomination tonight in his headlining speech. He's expected to address racial unrest as well as make special mention of Jacob Blake's shooting and the protests that have followed. Last night, we heard from First Lady Melania Trump, who called on Americans to end the unrest in our country. I also ask people to stop the violence and looting being done in the name of justice. Second Lady Karen Pence, White House Counselor Kellyanne Conway, and Lara Trump are among the other speakers tonight. Main speakers begin at 7.30. We'll have a full hour of coverage here on CBS starting at 9, and I'll bring you the highlights on News 3 Now at 10 as well. New tonight, a group of parents in private religious schools want the state Supreme Court to nullify Dane County's order to have 3rd through 12th graders start the year virtually. The Wisconsin Institute for Law and Liberty filed a petition today on behalf of 14 parents and 5 religious schools. The petition challenges the authority of Janelle Heinrich, Director of Public Health Madison in Dane County. The Institute for Law and Liberty filed a separate lawsuit with the High Court yesterday, also challenging Heinrich's authority to keep students home.
And here's Chief Meteorologist Gary Canalti with a look at our first warned forecast. First, let's take a look at powerful Hurricane Laura. It located just south of Lake Charles, Louisiana, about a 25 mile wide uh, eye here. This is high resolution radar. You can see the heaviest rain bands are just starting to move on shore in southern Louisiana, but there are bands of heavier thunderstorms that have been moving inland. And uh, you can see right now a tornado warning in effect for areas north and east of Baton Rouge. So these outer bands could still spawn up a couple of tornadoes, but the main problem is going to be the uh, storm surge, which could reach 20 feet right along the Texas Louisiana Gulf Coast. Hurricane warnings extend up into central Louisiana and then a tropical storm warning as far north as southern Arkansas as the fast movement of the storm could bring strong winds well inland from a normal hurricane landfall. Right now there is Laura maximum sustained winds 145 miles per hour with gusts to 175 miles per hour a powerful category 4 hurricane but the forecast from the National Hurricane Center has it just shy of category 5 strength as it as it uh, moves inland around one o'clock in the morning, uh, maximum sustained winds 150 miles per hour with gusts to 185 miles per hour. Now, because of the fast movement of the storm, it'll still be a strong tropical storm as it moves from Louisiana into Arkansas with uh, maximum sustained winds at 70 miles an hour and gusts to 85 miles per hour. Eventually, it will continue into southern portions of uh, Missouri, perhaps even as a tropical storm and then a tropical depression that could bring heavy rains to the eastern part of the country and then strong winds through New England as it moves back out in the Atlantic. Atlantic Ocean and it could retain uh, tropical characteristics as it moves back out into the Atlantic Ocean. Now around here, look for another hot day tomorrow. We have an alert day in the forecast for a high temperature of around 90, heat index 93 to 98, but the potential for some strong to severe thunderstorms tomorrow afternoon and tomorrow night. Tonight, all the thunderstorms are up to the north. There's a lot of warm air aloft that's just keeping the thunderstorms from developing this far south, but tomorrow as a cold front sags southward, there will be the potential for severe thunderstorms, a slight risk of severe storms according to the Storm Prediction Center, high winds, hail, heavy heavy rainfall, the main threats. And then on Friday, still a slight risk of severe thunderstorms before the front moves south of us later on Friday afternoon. Heavy rainfall is also a possibility. Some areas could pick up two to three inches in heavier thunderstorms. Other areas may see less than a quarter of an inch. Again, it all depends on where the heaviest storms uh, gradually uh, move through. There's Laura. You can see just a, a typical summertime pattern across the rest of the country with some scattered showers and thunderstorms. Our storms to our north are basically in the uh, vicinity of a cold front that eventually as it drops southward, will start to end the heat as we head into the latter part of the week. But right now, temperatures are still in the upper 80s to the lower 90s to our west. Dew point temperatures mid 60s to around 70 and heat index readings still around 100 degrees in La Crosse. So for tomorrow, uh, for, first a heat advisory to effect until 7 p.m. for areas west of Platteville to Lone Rock to Camp Douglas. Look for a high tomorrow of 90 degrees with thunderstorm chances later in the afternoon. You can see this on future track. Storms starting from north to south and then they move through tomorrow night and into Friday. And then Friday, we'll look for high temperatures in the lower 80s as the storms gradually come to an end Friday evening. Again, some heavy rainfall amounts in spots, other areas picking up a lot less. After the storms move through, look for a nice weekend, some thunderstorm chances the early part of next week, and some chances toward the end of the week as well. And coming up in sports, be the change? How about leading the change? How the Bucks put the NBA on hold while putting the fight for social justice first? That's next on News 3 Now. News 3 Now First Warn Weather is brought to you by Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Discover a shopping and design experience as comfortable as the furniture. Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Schedule your free design consultation today. It's no secret, Robertson is Wisconsin's aesthetic leader. But with results this natural, patients can keep it a secret if they want. Our secret to reducing stubborn body fat? Cool Sculpting. Book a free consultation to learn how cool sculpting is different at Robertson. To fix the economy, we have to get control over the virus. I'm releasing a plan to save lives in the months ahead. We need to increase federal support for testing, doubling the number of drive through testing sites. We absolutely need a clear message from the very top of our federal government that everyone needs to wear a mask in public. Every single frontline worker should have the personal protective equipment that they need to be safe. We need to support schools and child care programs so parents, if and when they can return to work, are confident that their children will be safe and cared for. And finally, we need to protect the populations most at risk, our seniors, vulnerable populations with pre-existing conditions. We need real plans, real guidelines with uniform 
nationwide standards. It's a simple proposition, folks. We're all in this together. We gotta fight this together. We'll emerge from this stronger because we did it together. I'm Joe Biden, and I approve this message. Three days only. It's the end of summer sale at Grand Appliance. Get the area's lowest appliance prices, plus up to $600 in extra savings on top appliance brands exclusively at Grand. Shop in-store or online at grandappliance.com August 27th through the 29th for great deals like this LG 6.3 cubic foot electric range with air fry and convection technologies for just $6.98. Grand Appliance and TV, trusted since 1930. Come in today for Rubens' annual leather event. Rubens has received generous discounts from all our fine leather suppliers. Natutsi, American Leather, and many other manufacturers have allowed Rubens to give you up to 10% off on all leather furniture. Rubens' downtown store and west side store have many pieces that are available for immediate delivery. Remember, all interior design services are complimentary. Stop into either Rubens today for our leather event. Getting back on the bus to head back to school this year may cause some extra anxiety for both kids and parents. Find out how districts returning to in-person instruction are working to give students safe rides on the next News 3 Now this morning. It's not just basketball for the Bucks. They were the first team to lead protests following the killing of George Floyd. Today, they boycotted Game 5 against the Magic a playoff game in protest of the shooting of Jacob Blake. The Bucks aren't just being the change, they're leading it. By not taking the floor, they caused the NBA to postpone the other two playoff games that were scheduled Wednesday night. Bucks senior vice president Alex Lazary had this to say about his team's history-making stand. Enough is enough. Change needs to happen. I'm incredibly proud of our guys, and we stand 100% behind our players ready to assist and bring about real change. And the fight for social justice has been on the minds of the team since they stepped into the bubble. We're down here playing the bubble to, to do these things for social justice and, and all that. Um, and to see it still going, going on, and we're just playing the games like it's nothing. Um, it's just a really uh, messed up situation. Tonight at 7, the league and the players will meet to discuss what's next and how they'll move forward with the rest of the season. We'll have an update on that at 10 o'clock. They showed it. You know, it's not about the game. It's not. A, it's more than that. And, um, you know, this is, a, this is a time where, you know, we need to, you know, really not stay quiet. So that was Josh Hader's reaction to the Bucks boycotting their game earlier this afternoon. Shortly after that, the Brewers met as a team and decided with the Reds that they would not play their game tonight. The Brewers have been using the motto, justice, equality now, all season long. Today, they lived it. So two big decisions for the two teams in Milwaukee. Pretty powerful stance. And all the other NBA playoff games also yeah, they're canceled halted too, today. Okay. All right, Zach, thank you. Let's go to Gary. Final check of the heat out there. Still pretty steamy. Temperatures are in the upper 80s to the lower 90s. Still 93 in Basketball. Dew point temperatures are in the 60s to around 70 degrees. And heat index readings are between about 90 and 95 over most of southern Wisconsin yet this evening. All right, Gary, thank you. And thanks for joining us for News for Now at 6. Enjoy your evening, and we'll see you back here at 10.